So welcome to part two of the niche videos. In this video, I'm gonna answer the question for you of how do you actually pick a niche? So starting off, there is money in every niche, but something that I want you to keep in mind are going to be barrier to entry, it's gonna be saturation, and then it's gonna be what I call your circle of proximity. And so let's start by talking about barrier to entry and saturation. So one of the most common pieces of advice that you'll get from the gurus out there is, if a niche is saturated, that means there's a ton of money in that niche. And while this is true, it's not necessarily a good approach. For example, if you wanna go get into dentistry, you're gonna be competing with a lot of very high level, aggressive, velociraptor style marketers out there because that niche is hyper saturated. And so unless you're bringing an extraordinary product to the table, you're gonna have a very difficult time getting in. And likewise, when it comes to barrier to entry, depending on what you wanna do, what your product is going to be, something like doing commission splits for lawyers requires you to be a lawyer yourself. So that is a very high barrier to entry, but it's also a very sexy offer for them because you can offer them a risk-free deal that is just like, hey, just give me a percentage of commission on every case. The same thing applies to businesses like realtors or MLOs. There are gonna be different niches where there is a higher barrier to entry in order for you to offer a higher quality product. And normally, the higher the barrier to entry, the less saturated it's going to be and the better it's going to be for you. Another example of this, in my industry, SEO, there's a lot of people that want to go into plumbing. Plumbing has a very low barrier to entry to start generating leads for. It's an extremely spammed out niche, but very few people think about doing something like asphalt removal or concrete contract, even though those are highly profitable niches, they're highly lucrative. And so this is just something for you to keep in the back of your head that generally it is going to be more difficult for you to go into a saturated niche with a low barrier to entry, as opposed to going for a niche that has low saturation or a high barrier to entry. Does this mean that it's impossible or that it should stop you from going into those niches? No. No, but one of the principles that I follow is that I like to stack the deck in my favor, meaning if you're playing a game of cards, I wanna do whatever I can to make sure that my deck is the best deck and the most likely to win. So anything that I can add in my favor, I'm going to add, and anything that I can take out that reduces my chances of winning, I am going to take out. So I wanna play games that are easier to win and harder to get into. So how do you actually pick a niche for yourself? In my last video, I talked about how most marketing agencies, they start off by picking the low-hanging fruit, seeing who do they know that can actually provide them with some kind of income some kind of authority, testimonials, reviews, and that is going to be the best way for you to actually pick your niche in the sense that when you're starting off, you're really just asking your friends, family members, people that you know, the plumber that comes to your house, the person who did your parents' mortgage, your grandparents' mortgage, the real estate agent who did those, the person who cuts your hair, anybody that you know and you have contact with, they are going to be your first customers. And really what the goal from that first customer is going to be is not necessarily to make a ton of money, but for you to get experience, authority, testimonials, and prove that you know what you're doing with marketing. From those pools of people, then all you have to do is kind of run that calculation of like, well, who do I want to work with? In my last niche video, which I'll leave a card somewhere on the screen for you guys. I mentioned how most marketers start off by picking the low hanging fruit around them, which builds them a broad customer base that is not niche specific. So what I mean by that is when you're starting off, the best thing you can do, the low hanging fruit that you can go for is who do you know? Who are your friends that run businesses? Who are the people that you're buying business services from? The person who cuts your hair, the person who does the pipes in your house, maybe the realtor who sold your parents their house, your grandparents their house, the person who did their mortgage. Who's your personal trainer? Do you have family members that run a business and these are going to be your first customers and the goal is not to make a ton of money I know when you're starting off you're desperate for cash but the goal is not to make a ton of money it's to get that initial review it's to get that initial proof of concept that you know what you're selling works and so maybe you do that for a couple of people and let's say now you have five or six different niches that you could potentially go into you've just reached out to everybody you know you're seeing what pans out and you get a couple of bites from that point on if you have those six different options then you just start running that calculation of like well how saturated is this market? What's the barrier to entry? And I'm going to add a couple more things. What's your experience with that market? How well do you know that market? And if you have an advantage on any of those fronts, then that is the obvious niche that you go into. Because once again, you should be opportunistic, start making 40k a month, and then worry about working with your dream clients. And that's all there is to it when it comes to picking the niche. It's really just going to be what is the easiest option for you when you're starting off. And all that you do is like, let's say you're going, into, you're working with barbers, and you get fantastic 
fantastic results for one barber, then you just go over one town over to the next barber and you're like, hey, look what I did for this person. I can do the same thing for you. And now you can actually start growing your business and you can start niching down. The last thing that I'll add is that margins actually do play a big role in not your ability to be successful in a niche, but how easy it is to market and get results for them. So for example, if I get one deal for a mortgage loan officer or a real estate agent, they're gonna make what, like three to five grand? We're asked to get that same kind of profit for a restaurant, I might need to bring them 300 customers. And so even though that doesn't play a role in how to pick a niche, it does play a role if you don't necessarily have your marketing skills developed yet. It's understanding that higher margin niches are normally going to be easier to get a return on, therefore it's easier for you to justify your services. And so in case it wasn't clear, the message that you should be getting from this video is that when it comes to picking a niche, pick the one that's going to be the easiest for you to be profitable in. There's money in every niche, but things that work in your favor are gonna be a higher barrier to entry, meaning you have some kind of higher qualification that lets you compete in an area where others cannot. So for example, you're a lawyer or you're a licensed real estate agent and you can offer that sexy product as opposed to just selling leads, as opposed to just selling calls. Lower saturation niches are gonna work more in your favor than higher saturated ones. So for example, working with concrete contractors as opposed to going into plumbing. But at the end of the day, the best niche is gonna be the one that you can get into, the one that you can get experience with based on those low hanging fruits. If you've enjoyed this video, then make sure to like, subscribe, leave your comments and thoughts below. I'm gonna leave resources for you guys. And I look forward to helping you on your journey to becoming a better business person.